As hip hop fans, we've seen many different rappers' careers take completely different paths. I mean, just look at people like Mac Miller and Tyler the Creator. Mac went from a frat rapper to an introspective artist, delivering some of the most emotional albums this century. Tyler went from making shock rap to making a borderline synth pop breakup album. On the other hand, we have someone like Chance the Rapper who seemed to have the world at his feet then drop one of the most disappointing albums ever made. I just don't know what to say. I am genuinely feeling like a strong zero on this record. But I don't think we've ever seen any rapper have the trajectory that Little Yachty has had. And for this, we start all the way back in 2011. Yeah, it's rewind time. But Little Yachty's debut didn't release till 2016. Just follow me. You see, the origins of Little Yachty's whole original sound and the wave he was born out of begins with everyone's favourite feminist. Sensational. You see, in 2011, Future dropped the track Tony Montana, which pretty much just changed hip hop as we know it, introducing this drug infused, slayed style that would continue to dominate the 2010s. Tony Martin, Tony Martin. Now like I said, this isn't directly the sound Little Yachty would go for, but it would pave the way and allow artists of his generation to become superstars. People like Young Thug would come through later on with tracks like Lifestyle, and once again, have old heads screaming at their phones. <laughs> anyway, 2015 was Yachty's breakout year. His breakout single, One Night, went viral and pretty much catapulted Yachty into superstardom overnight. I know you want this for life. And it's safe to say the reception was polarizing. The younger generation loved it. He was a guy breaking down traditions and making hip hop more fun. A lack of seriousness. And the old heads hated it. He was a guy going against everything we've built over the past 30 years. And Yachty was a part of the now infamous SoundCloud generation, which looking back was a huge moment and one of those where you just had to be there to truly understand it. But as much as old heads pushed back, there was absolutely no stopping little Yachty. Hey, little mama, would you like to be my sunshine? Nigga, touch my game, we gon' turn this shit to Columbine. I mean, you couldn't escape Little Yachty in 2016 from Kanye West's fashion show at MSG, multiple platinum features, and of course, his iconic debut mixtape, Little Boat. Bitch, you know it's Lil Ball. Bitch, it's Lil Ball and Lil Perry. I keep them hoes like a fairy. Now, some surprisingly loved it. Decent two, strong seven on this thing. And praised it for its innocence and joyful nature. While some called Yachty's SoundCloud rap's laziest possible copy and paste job. The same publication would call the tape boring, irritating, and whiny. But Little Boat was colourful, charming, lovable, goofy. Yachty's awkward delivery just worked. Just look at a track like Good Day. Today's a good day. Hey, 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 yeah. And despite the pushback from critics, Little Yachty's career saw an exponential rise this year, no more than being included in the 2016 double XL freshman class, which spawned the now infamous cipher. Young nigga and the Gucci stands. Fuck with me if you wanna die, young nigga, I don't want no suit and ties. But see all these artists, apart from Denzel Kerry, they were all punching bags for the music industry at the time, defined as mumble rap. These were the guys who were taking hip hop backwards, tainting in the beloved genre, and most people expected these artists' careers to be super short lived. So I find it funny looking back how all of them are superstars some seven years later. Anyway, back to Little Yachty. 2016 was one of the quickest rises we've ever seen a hip hop artist have. From One Night to Little Boat to I Spy to the Freshman Class, and of course, Broccoli. Hey, little mama, would you like to be my sunshine? Nigga, touch my game, we gon' turn this shit to Columbine. But as quick as Yachty's rise was, so was the fall. Now, we aren't talking about a commercial fall. Yachty has always been in the charts and has always sold well. But I'm talking about a fall from a critical and reception standpoint. You see, while Yachty's debut tape had a lot of backlash, it was so polarising that a lot of people loved it. It had a place in people's hearts and even some critics could see the vision and the joy in Little Boat. But all of this would change with the release of his debut album, Teenage Emotions. If Little Yachty wasn't a punching bag for critics before, he certainly was now. Yachty refused to engage with hip hop's long standing legacy and instead decided to appeal to a new generation and became a leader of this youth movement that was happening in hip hop at the time. Well, the most polarising man in hip hop continued on this same path. 
You see, teenage emotions seem to lack direction to critics, with more saying it was a bit weird, all over the place. The album's lead single, Peekaboo, was an attempt to give Yachty's awkward delivery a more traditional trap makeover, and the song is undoubtedly a classic, come on we all love it, with Migos in fine form, but it is still most memorable for this line. My new bitch, y'all love she blow that dick like a cello. But we saw some experimentation from Yachty on here, Forever Young, Borders on EDM, and Bring It Back kinda sounds like New Wave. But this experimentation didn't save Yachty from once again a wave of hatred for his new takes on hip hop, with one reviewer saying, One of the worst albums I have ever heard. Chainsmokers are stellar music geniuses compared to this stream of shit. And once again, the critics were expecting Yachty to disappear, for his career to slowly fade out. But once again, that just didn't happen. Yachty would continue to be in and around the top 20 on Billboard, and would have people waiting for his next project. But Yachty would go on a run that would leave much to be desired for critics. A full album run that was constantly labelled as mediocre. Music that left much to be desired. Yachty's core fanbase were happy though, constantly being fed new music. And while critics seemed to dislike every project that was coming out, there were definitely some gems sprinkled throughout every project. On Little Boat 2 we had tracks like 66 and NBA Young Ball was definitely a standout. Put shit up, bust it down. Bottom the crib, I got several amenities. You gonna get shot like the Kennedys. On nothing to prove, we of course had Get Dripped with Carty and Yacht Club is a classic. Don't come unless you send focus, so just like ten folks, since you boost the info. And on Little Boat 3 in the deluxe we had tracks like TD with Tyler, Rocky and Tierra Whack, and of course how could I ever forget Flex Up? And finally we have Michigan Boy Boat, which to this day remains super polarising with critics and fans alike. Some say it's a standout tape from Yachty with him kinda taking a back seat and allowing the guest features to take centre stage. Got a private FN, guess what's up under that? She in love with my dude right like Thundercat. But it was really the back end of 2022 I would consider the start of the revival of Little Yachty's career. Like I said, Little Yachty was performing well in the charts, but to be honest, he hadn't really grabbed the attention of the entire world since his unbelievable breakout year. Well, Poland changed everything. I took the walk to Poland. This song got picked up instantly by TikTok and was pretty much an overnight sensation and it's clear to see why a catchy filthy beat, Yachty using his awkward vocals in the most addictive way and the lyrics are silly as shit. It was just bound to be a banger and yeah Yachty really hit heights he hadn't hit in like 6 or 7 years but then just as we thought he was going to go down this route and follow this style of music, Yachty presented us with Let's Start Here. Now. And when we thought Yachty would be chasing that awkward rage sound that worked so well on Poland, he decided to hit us with a psychedelic rock album. And for the first time in his career, Yachty had serious critical acclaim. Consistently too. It wasn't like the mixed reception of Little Boat. Critics and fans alike genuinely loved the artistic switch up and the creative development showed on this album. Firstly, Yachty switched out his usual collaborators for the likes of Daniel Caesar, Tezo Touchdown and Justin Sky. It was a complete left turn that shocked pretty much the world. And it really paid off as this is his best album to date. Tracks like Black Seminole are almost ethereal. <laughs> But he didn't completely abandon his old sound because what makes this album so special is that Yachty's awkward vocal tone and delivery still remain the centre of attention and adds so much charm to the instrumentation that backs it. And yeah, this album has completely changed the perception of Little Yachty as an artist. People went from seeing him as this goofy rapper who couldn't really evolve to this once goofy rapper who now has bags of potential. And this switch pretty much happened overnight and Let's Start Here revived Yachty's career. But that isn't it, Yachty has strategically capitalised on the hype that surrounded this psych rock album and has released a bunch of singles that are the complete opposite. More of this addictive range sound, Strike, Tesla and a couple more and Yachty truly excels in this sound and the fans are eating it up. He even dropped a two pack EP with J.I.D. 
that even his biggest haters can't ignore. And after this quick revival of his career, fans and critics alike can't wait to see what Yachty releases next. Will he undergo more creative development, tap into some more genres? I guess we'll just have to wait and see. I think little Yachty deserves his flowers. After a breakout year, constant backlash from critics and a solid hip hop fan base, while also building his own core fan base, he's managed to reinvent himself and now seems to have everyone on his side and the foundation to release another great album and once again give everyone a big surprise. Like I said, everyone predicted Yachty and the whole SoundCloud generation to die off after a few years, but here we are still talking about him and he deserves credit for that. Anyway, if you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like and subscribe, it helps out more than you could ever imagine. And be sure to check out this video I recently did on Travis Scott's Utopia, it would mean a lot. Thank you.